I was not expecting that. I was expecting not to expect someone saying it doesn't count. Well, after 530 days, over a year basically, we have the first full Nintendo Direct at being at since September 2019, which was a much simpler time in hindsight. Right, so, lots of announcements, even though it's not everything I quite expected. I know, on the whole, I'm satisfied with what I've seen. If I'll need some time to watch some other stuff, so... I'm gonna be going over, over all the reveals, reveals in order, so... Let's get started. First off, we have the new Smash Fighter, who... Even though this one was kind of on my don't want list, I would have been more interested in it and someone else, but Pyra and the special form Myth Weapon Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is going to be coming in March. I don't know what I expected. I mean, given how really not in the Xenoblade, and even though Rex is technically not part of the roster, he does show up as an assistant final smash and I mentioned before that I am really a indifferent to Xenoblade. I mean, I mean, as in, it's a series I don't really care about. Oh, it's, but I understand, and at least logistically, hey, hey, why they're doing it, given how the sequel sold over well over a million copies worldwide, right, almost two million. It's probably going to be getting there soon, if not if they're already there. Maybe I have a clear idea what to feel in March. I only did show quick completion. I personally would have, if I was going to choose someone else, I would have gone with Cosmos from Xeno Saga, but that's just me personally. So, let's get going. So, another bit that's actually getting a bit more interesting to me Fall Guys is coming I mean, to the Switch for real this time. I already had a lot of fun playing that on. On PS4, I'm probably, I'm probably going to reinstall that soon, given how this not update just came out. I mean, I don't know what the performance is going to be like, I mean, but... If the system can run on Among Us, it definitely is capable of running a game where... I have hilarious... This fails from... I'm jelly bean people, I mean... I have to say where... It's one of the few games I play where even losing is fun, where kind of just the whole, the, all the rad doll physics, and it's like one of those over top Japanese game shows I like to watch sometimes, and I am in all the costumes. It does make me wonder, I don't know if they're going to reissue the costumes they had on the PS4 version or on the Switch, but I could see some of them coming back, like with Sonic with 30th anniversary as well, like the Godzilla costume with Godzilla vs. Kong coming out in March, finally. Hey, right, so... I don't have an official release date yet, just this summer, but I'll be looking forward to it, so there's that. Outer Wilds from Annapurna, also coming this summer, which... Based on the concept of trying to escape a... a intergalactic cataclysm in the span of 22 minutes, and... Another one, much like Deathloop, as well as, like... A potential release of Majora's Mask. I mean, that's, I mean, I still wonder why other video games don't try the whole, 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 whole time loop concept. When it seems like like an idea that seems like very video game friendly. The whole Groundhog Day rewatching that film again also showed how it was like the arc of trying to break through by changing the conditions of it. I mean. I still really like the whole anecdote about trying to keep in the plot thread about like the elderly homeless man where initially want the apparently the student wanted to cut but both Murray and Ramus just to be kept in to show how Phil wasn't a god, I mean and so even though I'm more familiar with Anna Perna's movie division, the video game one, and it's coming out on May 14th, so I guess we'll oops. That's the next entry, so it's coming out seven times, I guess we'll find out then. So, here's the episode May 14th entry, Family Comedy Detective Club. I'm going to be referring to this, both the games are releasing as one series, given how they're a mixture between a detective game and a visual novel that seems to be 
the first ever states I released in the series, which I'll appreciate that. I mean, given how they had they've updated the graphics, so I'll add some other quality of life improvements, which makes sense if you're going to be releasing a game in that series that has never come to stateside before. I mean, or it, it should be interesting to see, I mean, nonetheless. I mean, as hopefully, hey, it should. It'd be an entertaining game in the last just once it comes out on oh, May. It's another one I'm gonna be waiting to see. So it's like usual. I'm not gonna be picking up every single one of these right when they launch. And I will, however, be he he keeping an eye high on them. Um unless I stay otherwise, so yeah. <laughs> Samurai Warriors 5, the latest installment of of the long-running Warriors and Muso title, and I kind of expected ahead that this would be coming, given the success of Age of Calamity, and while the subgenre and series is not as popular here as it is in Japan, and it does have an audience there, and I actually prefer this, this one to the main Dynasty Warriors series, main series, and... This one is a fictionalization of of the of Lord Oda Nobunaga and his conquest. I mean, it's clear that when how they had the legend, the gameplay, it's clear they're going more for over the top entertainment rather than historical accuracy, which is a concept I don't have a problem with. I love Son Goku Bizarre, for example. So also not having an official release date, just says summer. So I'll keep an eye on this one. Yep. Okay, so Legend of Mana HD coming on June 24th, rather than the full-on 3D Trust Mana Week, which is pretty decent, and the not-so-much one of Secret of Mana, uh, this one is going to be a, a very straightforward HD version of the original game, which actually is from many titles turning 20 this year, enhancing the visuals and sound, and also having some new edition gameplay as well. I hope this one turns out pretty well, given how much I already have a collection of mana, I've been playing that extensively, and I mean, someone on Twitter was talking about Dragon Quest, but nah, I'm more of this and Chrono Trigger for the my Mix of Square, Enix, and Toyama collaboration, so I'll definitely keep an eye on this one. Hopefully they do a good job with it, and so let's keep going. Hey. Monster Hunter Rise is still coming on March 26. All I can hope is please let the cap let the developers fix down issues ahead of launch because on top of some problems problems that were like the controls are registering correctly and they apparently there are performance issues who's depending on how which kind of completing ahead of the missions and the demo was that depending on how many people on your friends list has it actually made it buggier, which is going to be a problem given how large part of the game's appeal is being able to play with other people around the world, which has gotten much more popular over the last year for fairly obvious reasons. And I mean, I'm not the biggest Monster Hunter fan. I think this game looks interesting, and I hope this one does well. Hell, hell, I maybe it'll also. Maybe I'll have other games come to the system, and even though Capcom had not considered their porting world to the system, if 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 this one does is okay, maybe they'll change their minds. Given how other titles in the system perform pretty decently, as for stories to go either way, given how I'm actually the surprise actually making that one at all, given how the first one was on the only sold seven hundred K worldwide and. Not so many people watch the anime either, so. But the next one is definitely going to be a very pleasant surprise. Mario Golf Super Rush. Uh, and given how that's coming out on June 25th, and it's going to be the first new Mario Golf game we've gotten in seven years, the last installment being a Mario Golf Off World Tour on 3DS. I mean, it would have been nice if the Wii U got installments as opposed to Ultra Smash. Mario Tennis, which was alright, but given how they're not only they revamping everything from the visuals to the gameplay to even like the story mode, I gotta say, 
Nice shot. Oh, that's mean. And given how I normally am not a big golf fan, these are one of the only two golf games I like to play. Hey, the other being Hot Shots on PlayStation systems. Um, so I tend to go more for arcade sports titles rather than simulation ones in general, like Highway Realism. It takes a bad seat to just pure fun. I mean, like, fun and like that whole Karen Hobbs, Hobbs comic I read the other day where you don't want to play with old geese, you had to make golf a contact sport. <laughs> so it needs to say, I'm not sure it's going to be like a day one purchase. It's going to depend on, depend on whether I got the money, but it's definitely one I will be picking up for certain. Yeah. So, March 24th, Tales from the Borderlands, which is finally getting re released again. And after Telltale's most closure, I mean, this is one of the ones I think they went back to the head to the rights holders at. Holders at. There's a gearbox, and even though, even with this drama between Reese actor as well as Pitchford, who in the latter case has definitely been a reputation for making people angry, not just as often fans, but also company, and hey, so. But overall, the game is good. I hope it runs well on the Switch, man, given how uh, the previous titles. Titles before the third game managed to do pretty well. I mean, not quite as as showy as other systems, but the fact that they can run them in all is actually nothing short of impressive. I mean, and with Reese, he's I mean to team up with Fiona. Well, Fiona is a buddy in Vault Hunter. Her Reese is like he's is definitely someone who's not the not. More used to desert with their adventuring, and, and and definitely hope that it'll, it'll work all right. And especially looking forward to trying it again once I get a chance to. I mean, yeah. Capcom Arcade Stadium, um, is actually available now in 1943. More games to come. Don't mind that. The just yard waste. Why well, they trash? I think, but. That's still, I guess it's not going to be too bad. And so, I'm just going to keep going. Let me real quick. Stubbs the Zombie Without a Pulse. I totally forgot this existed, to be honest. I mean, I mean, I guess it has some of the cult following. Like, we have lots of games where you end up killing zombies, but... Not a whole lot of ones where you are the zombie, so oh and but it's been but this remaster being done by Aspire Media, the same people who have done on um, a lot of these Star Wars games, like especially like last year's HD version of Star Wars Racer. So I'm probably not gonna be getting this one. I guess I'll find out uh, what this version turns out to be like on, on March sixteenth. So but this is definitely a big one. And for me, No More Heroes 3. Hey, since definitely looking forward to the latest installment of this, of this series. I mean, these, especially after the first two games come to the system, and even though that spin off wasn't the best, I have a solid spot for it. Or it's mean, or it's since I think I'm really looking forward to getting the Bean Katana on a I raised those aliens and even doing odd jobs uh, to make money to take them on. So it was going to be last year before everything happened, but it's going to be coming out on August 27th, which actually a lot sooner than I expected. So definitely looking forward to that one. And yeah. Another one from Annapurna, Neon Whites, where you're hunting demons. And as for one of the main voices, hello there, Steve Bloom. Well, I haven't haven't seen the entire cast for this game yet. I certainly don't need it for him. Um, since he's definitely a among kind of voice actors who's managed to lend his talents to numerous works such as like 
Making Log Hitters owns a Spike Spiegel, Roger Negotiator, the animated, I mean, I mean, the primers of Starscream, and even Leron, the beautiful Queen Girl, and Log On. Um, definitely, they have a voice that can make someone melt like butter. I mean, and, and even though I'm more familiar with Annapurna's film division, and well, as their mini major from A24. I noticed that games have some reputation to explain to their, their films, I mean, films which, especially in the case of that one conventional horrors like Hereditary Midsommar, which while being uniformly praised by critics, audiences tend to be much more like a love or hate relationship, I man. Like, for their films, especially Midsommar, I've definitely fallen on the love side, I mean, even though I'm not going to be formally viewing it right now. Definitely evokes some memories, like, is remind me of a, a cliff scene when I saw some of those rallies last year, but I'm getting ahead of myself. It's coming out in winter, so I guess that's that. DC Superhero Girls Team Power, coming on June 6th, I mean, based on the hit anime hit spinoff of the same name. Hey, man. Hey, man. Even though I'm not obviously not in target audience for the show... There is something I kind of have find entertaining about it. I mean, the art style, I kind of like how the magic caps a stylized nature from the TV series, and, and even though there are some, it's some cringy things in the show, like the whole, like, every title, like, every title social media tag, and, like, I, there are, it feels like a decent amount of effort being put into it, much like with, I thought hopefully this game has our vibe. I'm not going to put, go into it with some expectations what happens with, like, the Gotham Knights or the Suicide Squad game, and, but I do like how... They're including both not just fighting criminals and supervillains, but also also just dealing with the you know, the pressure day to day life. I mean, I find not just with big names like Batgirl, Supergirl, Wonder Woman, or Harley Quinn, but also ones like Green Lantern and one of the female members of the core, Satana, uh, Katana, and many many others. I mean, so. I'm not sure who's developing this game, hey, but definitely looks at least better than than and that Bakugan game that Wave Four put out. I mean, this is a license I would have liked to have Wave Four worked on instead. I mean, uh, and like uh, among among with Justice League and Batman, but follows all of its criteria. Since I feel like instead of, of of saying you can play this game on your Switch, they should have said please play this game. We're trying to get this off the shelf. Like seriously. Went to Mall War to get my phone minutes re upped, and even though the price has been slashed has by nearly half since Mall War just still aren't that many takers in there. The only way we could move that Bakugan game is actually he gave it away for free with games people actually wanted to play, which is saying something. Yeah. <sighs> Plants vs. Zombies Battle of April Complete Edition coming March 19th. This also looks like a Looks like an entertaining theme title. I mean, even though I have not played the other ones, it's actually pretty well suited to this style of gameplay. And I hope that I've seen the previous editions that managed to do pretty decently. So hopefully, this complete edition also fulfills that niche. And also, the next one definitely caught me off guard once again. Hmm. Metopia, which is coming on May 21st. I mean, I was not expecting this, to be honest. Like, while this may have been on the top of the list of 3DS port and 3DS ports that wanted to come to the Switch, which I think it is one that is particularly well suited for the system, where you can cast your Miis and go on these kind of humorous fantasy quests. I mean, it's me. It turned out to be pretty fun on 3DS, so hopefully, hey, on top of the new feature they're adding, that this formula will translate well to the system. Um, and. I wasn't really into Tomodachi life, but this one I uh, actually found to be much more my speed, so let's hope hope that it works as well on the Switch it's on 3DS, so let's okay, go. Okay, there's also the Animal Crossing New Horizons and Super Mario Brothers collab. Which will be starting which will be which will be given out in the update on February twenty fifth, as well as fully only on March first. Here's all new items. Costumes and 
setups for your island for the Mario Universe. Mario Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury is out now. If they want to get that when they get a chance. And 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 naturally it's also seen a resurgence in the Bowser memes like and also the Bowser's Bowser's furry ones. But personally my favorite one hand that I one I just kind of saw was like where Mario and Bowser are having like a Dynamax battle where like as if to say Hello Cat Mario from Smart 3D World, hello Pikachu from Pokemon. And they both get bigger. <laughs> nice. And there's another pleasant reveal, the Outer Patrolla sequel that was in development and has been given its initial tease as part of Triangle Strategy as a working title. I actually hope they keep it if it keeps the same, same kind of polygon on that as title, even as it's going to be like a whole new research of 2D RPGs, in which the conflict that is going to be over salt and iron and which are apparently very rare materials and their verse mean verse mean I understand why they do it we really explained it but personally I don't think the conflict will be really serious here's until they're fighting over zinc I mean like well uh, zinc you wouldn't be able to have weapons you wouldn't be able to have a car battery or even a telephone I mean I mean <laughs> I'm just the first thing I thought of like the whole Oh, it's like, this had to be one of my favorite entertainment film gags in that show, I mean, it's coming in 2022, so I've got time, time to replay the first game again, and so, there's also going to be a demo, and chance to leave feedback, which I tend to do so, it is entirely possible to, to talk about a game without being, being so hurt about it, I mean, so... Yeah. So, okay, so next up, which this doesn't have a release date, eight, yeah, it just says 2021. Um, Furry and the cat acting up. Star Wars Hunters, which I guess is a galactic battle royale. I guess we're not getting Vipola Commando on the console, at least not yet. I was kind of hoping for that, which. It was basically like Star Wars meets Unreal, it's like as cool as it sounds. Hopefully, a spy media can do that now that EA doesn't have the exclusive license anymore. But they're still going to publishing games, which bodes well for the Jedi Fallen Order sequel, as well as a potential third Battlefront reboot game. game. And they're easily among the titles I could see being feasibly coming to the system um, if EA wants to get more games on here. Here, apart from. Be an improvement over like like another a legacy edition sports title at all when the console's still new relatively new and only have it through its life cycle. I mean kinda of tipping your hand a little bit early there, fellas. Hmm. On that note, Knockout City. I'm not sold on this one like some other people are I mean. Apparently they have a bunch of characters that look like they have come from other games. Is most one of which is very obvious as uh, take on like the orcs and warcraft and surprise activists and blizzards isn't really prepping their having their suits but given and how it's basically it's a mixture of a dodgeball game and a battle royale title i'm gonna wait till it comes out may 21st and to hear more because right now i'm just Maybe it's because I don't play a whole lot of the Battle Royale titles, the titles typically. I'm just, I'm not really feeling this one at all, so I'm gonna keep going. <sighs> World's End Club. I don't know what to think about this one, to be honest, I've slept on it. I mean, I was initially gonna say pass in this one, mainly because I don't really play other games as any hatred. Her, her, I mean. I mean, I, I mean, apparently the same many people worked on like the Zero Escape and Zero Time Dilemma series, which is the only real frame reference I have, but as someone who did not play those, I basically I have no real expectations for it, so just follow this under Derek Wait and See once it comes out on May 28th, but the next one I definitely have much clear idea about. Oh yes, Hades. Hades physical edition is coming 
on March 19th, which also includes who's a code that gives you like this game soundtrack as well as some artwork for the game. This has proven to be a easily another indie title I well, really enjoy given how I can often compare the gameplay to Bastion. Apparently it's also made by the same developer, Super Massive Games, who's been a sort of a mini a major major air in the industry and I'm sorry that no straight roads did not really appeal to me, but this one definitely did. Like the unique approach on Greek mythology was like the roguelike RPG subgenre. I mean, if I get a chance to pick this one up, given how I expect a lot of people are going to try and be after this one, and I'm definitely going to enjoy hey, this. I mean, especially much like the next one Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. And. And while oh, are you hibus of me up being Smash, uh, at least we still have a trilogy of great games to enjoy. I mean, this collection includes like the Sigma editions of the first two Ninja Gaiden reboot games, and which are definitely great examples of how to do a video game he he, he launched right. Hey, to mean, and same deal like with, and also even though the third game in, in, in Space Version was not very good, mainly because of how they nerfed a lot of the mechanics and took out a lot of the weapons and ninjutsu. The Razor Edge version, which came out on both the Wii U and the and several Sony systems, definitely a corrected course. I mean, even though that's probably the point that by Itagaki had left after the company to form his own, so as to fly more of his planes, I mean, I mean, and since definitely like the archetypical rockstar kind of game developer, I mean, but still, oh, well, I think the research version is definitely the good one. I'm glad they ported that version instead, where it's just closer to the first two ones to sell in tone, tone, and and even though I can hold my own on normal, oh, much like the original games on earlier consoles, almost. Oh, it's, they're difficult, yes, but they are one that ones that can be learned and mastered through patience and persistence. As someone who has plenty of both, especially in this day and age, once they come on June 10th, I'll definitely be wanting to play these things all over again. And so, definitely very sweet. Yeah. So, Age of Clowny expansion pass. Uh, so, I mean, I'm waiting till I get and clear base game first, which is my policy on any anything like that, I mean, that sense. I mentioned before, I do not go for passes or every single game that offers them. Um, this will be one of the few ones I do, and I also kind of find it very really refreshing that this is a company that uses them very sparingly compared to other ones, I, I know, and I think they could learn a thing or two about that, I mean, that sense. Seriously, hey, hey, I mean, I just, but still, I the hard thing of trading is for me actually just finding the blasted game because, I mean, as I knew that this specific spinoff had its audience due to being tied to Zelda, uh, and, but this one, given how this one's actually canon to the main games, games, Games that might be part of the reason why it's actually already become like the best selling in a, a Warriors title by a landslide. So, and it's now time for lightning round. The first time I've been able to do this in a long time. Been waiting for this. So, play the Vault 2, February 26th. Don't really care. Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection, February 25th. Can't say get good without ghosts and goblins. It's essentially once a soul is born of its day, a in turn not just in terms of difficulty either. Saga Frontier, April fifteenth. I don't really care about the saga series. Anyways, and last but definitely not least of this night round, Apex Legends on March 9th. Arguably the worst kept secret of EA's titles in the system, and I have not played paid that one yet, but I think this might be a good time for me to start once it goes live, so... And you can have crossplay on there, so... 
Oh, I might even consider doing it after I start this also, make sure my... As long as like it's on the same EA log, it should be fine. So, there we go. Hmm. So, Skyward... Okay, so, so excited. I'm definitely going to be tricky to get this out. So, while I definitely can, I can wait easily for more on the Breath of the Wild sequel, how much I love the first game... Hey, in the meantime, this looks to be like the first of many HD titles or heavy versions of previous Zelda titles for the anniversary. One is actually hoping for it, for that matter. Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword HD, hey, which is coming out July 16th, plus special Zelda Joy-Cons, which definitely will get getting backups to handle the drift. As I was saying... The game's concept is definitely one that I've always had a soft spot for, not just like the chronology or the official timeline, but also the idea yeah, that this is how it all started and all the allies and, and adversaries helped shape the rest of the series. And between the more advanced motion controls, as in no iron pointing the console, and classic controls, you can use the, like, the buttons and the analog sticks. Especially if you're playing on Switch Mini or like a regular gamepad. This means that Tom McShay officially has no excuse. I mean, who's now? I mean, since definitely they always told me in technical aspects, I mean, I mean, with the frame rate being faster as well as, well as definitely look like I can run 1080p, getting the other we only maxed out at 480p. But it was back in the days when not everybody had each TV yet, but now. My both my computer and my phone can display things in 1080p. He are even 4K ready. He, I definitely. He, yep. I think this is a day one purchase for me, as he, especially once I have the dough, maybe with those Joy Cons as well. So, oh, and as for other titles coming to platform, I submit the question is not if, but rather when. I like to maintain. Another, a little bit of mystery in my life still, especially with this last one, which, in my opinion, is really to say the best for last one. And week. now we have what I believe is like the, the best, my favorite, my highlight of this reveal. I mean, coming 2022, who, after a success of the first two games, I submit the question was less if and rather when. And we have Splatoon 3. Even though this is just like the initial build they revealed so far, are, are in the details, given how, the, how it's not coming out until 2022, so they're, of course, going to be a little bit scarce right now. Oh, I mean, now it's definitely got a lot going for it already, given how, given how after her, the chaos reigned, in the final Splatfest, I mean, I mean, and you actually, I think what I can gather that on top of having new multiplayer modes, new who options to deck out your, your character in terms of hairstyles, else, and even and what kind of you kind know, of pants you're wearing, wearing sense. And so I'm pretty sure our, our you need to ha have to maintain some modesty to order to get the E10 rating. And still, I mean, even in like a like a apocalyptic wasteland to protect your body from the elements. And also gives more weight to that persistent fan theory where it suggests that the series takes place in a post-apocalyptic like, like, like world where squids and octopi Replace humans dominant species on Earth, I mean, but took on human traits, society, and outfits, and like the first game was very overtly written in its Japanese, his influence. The second still had it, had it, but they also used some elements from New York City as well. I mean, I wonder what they're going to be doing for this one, um, given the desert landscapes and the city they're using as your hub. The fact that the the tower has actually been ripped out of the ground, and and 
I'm not sure who's got the zap fish this time. I'm but the easy joke there I made was when I first saw the first image was like like Splatoon 3 Beyond Kelp Dome or the Amanda Woomian, given how you have a a salmonid companion with you. I don't know whether it humanized salmonids at this time. Um, but I guess we'll find out. Like in my head at least. I can imagine like the male ones is kinda of like one of the punks of the Mad Max films or an females. I'm thinking kinda of like Linda Hamilton and T2, who at least I used to try to imagine details in my head even before I do anything with them on paper or on screen, so anyway, it's hard to say for now. Even even though there were I can hear elements that I was mixed on, on the whole, I'm quite satisfied with the first big direct we've had. And over a year and more to come, and not just with things like 25th anniversary of Pokemon and like 35th anniversary of Zelda. I'm eager to see what happens next. And as for this whole virtual E3 proposal, like they're going to do that last year, but they couldn't get everything together in time. That's why everyone just did their own thing. I will just deal with that as it comes. That's why I used that snake salute last year when I found out they pulled the plug. So, anyway, I will see y'all later. Mm.